Well, hey there, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. I've been working on some vintage-inspired Halloween DIYs. They're not spooky. They're cute as they can be, and I hope you're going to like them. But I'm not going to sit here and blab all day. Let's just get on into it. This first one is my favorite DIY of the whole video. I got this plaque. I'm assuming I got it at a thrift store somewhere along the way because it has 75 cents on the back of it. The picture that has been painted on the front is not raised, so we can paint right over it, no problem. And I like the shape of the plaque, and it's already got the hanger on the back, so hey, hey, can't lose with that. I've got some DIY paint in the color Sandy Blonde. It's kind of like a khaki beige color, and I love DIY paint. It's my favorite because it takes one coat, and it's covered. And then I'm going to show you when I dry it down because I always love how it just gets a lighter color and it's just the prettiest paint ever. So I pulled some pictures off of Etsy and these are just like vintage Halloween pictures. I'll leave the link down below of where I got them at, but look how pretty they are. They're little kids with like pumpkins and this one's my favorite. And then there's just all different kinds. There's some that are a little more cartoony. And some that are just, you know, they look like real life pictures. But anywho, they're really nice. And, you know, I love this one. I've been using it some in my DIYs. I'm going to use this big one, however. I printed it out on sticker paper that was sent to me by Hippo. It's just like printer paper that goes through the printer, but it's got a sticker back on it. So when you cut your picture down, it's literally a sticker. And so all you have to do is peel that backing off and place it wherever you want it to go. I thought it would be cool to use this IOD stamp called Vintage Textures. I've never used it before. And it's got four different stamps in here. And each one gives a different type of texture. You know, kind of like for the background. You can do a crackle. Um, one looks like the picture's distressed. I've never used these stamps before. So when you start off using one of these stamps, the very first time you use them, you just peel it off, you get you a sanding sponge, and you go over it. You don't have to go over it harsh or anything. You just go over it one direction and then go in the other direction. And that just basically gets any kind of like maybe leftover gook or anything that, that came from the factory. And my sanding sponge is horrific. It was literally peeling off whenever I was sanding these. But hey, it worked and it's all good. I'm just going to ink this up with my black archival ink. And to be honest with you, I don't know which one I want to use. So I'm just going to use a little bit of everything. I don't really know how they turn out. I kind of like these up in the upper hand corner here. And so when I placed it down, it did look like it had been distressed. And I just wanted this picture to have some type of a background. I wasn't being picky about it. I just wanted it to have some type of something in the background. And so I just kind of went over and used several of these different little stamps in here and just kind of had a little party with it. Then I waited for that ink to dry, which didn't take long at all. And then I'm just going to place that big picture that I have that's a sticker right over the top. I want to welcome you to my channel. I thank you so much for stopping in, like I said, to spend a little time with me today. If this is the first time you've ever been to my channel, please hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We'd love to have you and we always have room for more. Also, if you would, hit the thumbs up button. That's the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. It pushes my videos out there to people who've never seen me before. And I greatly appreciate you for doing that for me. Now, I've never used a sticker this size before, so I just kind of had to fool around with it until I got it in the position I wanted. If I sound funny, I've been using a new microphone. I don't normally use one, but I've been using one because I thought that it would make my voice clearer. 
But in some aspects, I think it makes me sound very strange. Let me know what y'all think about that. If you like the way that the microphone sounds, if it, if it helps you, or if you think that it was just fine the way it was. But just let me know. Here I'm just taking a little piece of Dollar Tree ribbon, and I'm just going to go around my picture and kind of outline it to give it a little something. And I just put a little dab of glue around it to hold the ribbon. Now I'm going to take some of this cotton muslin, and I got this at Walmart. It's the Waverly brand, you see, and it comes in like, I want to say it's two yards. Um, so I just unrolled it, and I like muslin because it's kind of like a drop cloth. You can just make a cut in it and then rip it with your hands, and I like that ripped frayed look. So I just ripped a piece off, and I'm using the IOD stamp called Letterpress. I've never used this stamp before, so I had to prep it just like I did before with the sanding sponge. And after much thought and consideration, I just ended up putting 31 on there and like a little exclamation mark. I was going to put like trick or treat, happy Halloween, but nothing fit on there. So we ended up with 31. <laughs> and I just stamped it on the muslin and then just kind of ripped it down to the size that I needed, and we're just going to put this right under our little girls. I love to do mixed media like this, is what you call it, where you just kind of use different textures, different things on your, your uh, decor, and it just kind of brings something different. I like it. I like things to stand out and just be a little different, you know. So I just make a little cut and rip it, you see, until I get it down to where I want it, just a little bit bigger than the 31 itself. Now I'm going to take just a piece of this tool, and it's from Dollar Tree. It's the orange, and I'm loving this tool this Halloween. i just been using the tarnation out of it. And I just kind of folded up a little piece that's a little bit bigger than the 31 and glued it all down. Then I'm going to take one of my sparkly spiders that came from the Dollar Tree, and he's got orange on him, so I thought it was fitting, and I'm just going to put him down at the bottom. Now, I'm not normally a glitter person, but at Halloween and Christmas, I go crazy with the glitter. I love it. If you don't like glitter, just skip that step, and the tool has glitter on it also. Now, I got this raffia from Amazon last year, and all I'm going to do is just, like, cut a piece of it off. I don't need much. I just want some kind of little flare up at the top. So, what I decided to do was just take a zip tie and tie that up top. But first, I wanted to add a couple of little sprigs of this. It's like a little glitter sprig, I guess you could call it. It's from Dollar Tree, of course. And I just add a couple on one side, a couple on the other side, and just kind of make it flare out and look cute. I'm just simply going to take that zip tie and tie it right in the center. I don't close the zip tie all the way until I make sure all of my stuff that's inside of it is exactly where I want it to be. And then I just close it up real tight and I'm just gonna put a little glue up top to hold it. Now for the embellishments. I took a couple of these little, they're those tiny little ornaments from Dollar Tree. There's a glitter, um, a slick one, and then another version, there's three different ones, and I always do my stuff in numbers, uneven numbers, like three or five. So I'm gonna stick three of them up top, and I still felt like it needed something else. So I added this little black one up at the top, and then I'm also gonna add these two very small orange flowers because I thought that they just kinda brought out something that this piece might need. And then I just take the raffia up at the top and just kind of make a couple of cuts in it so that it would stick out just a little bit more. And one of my favorite things to do to add some flair is just to take some of the tool, no particular size, just small pieces, and just kind of stick it up inside the uh, raffia. It doesn't matter where 
just wherever you think it needs a little pizzazz and color. Instead of adding a bow, to me, this adds so much more. You see, I'm just taking a small piece here, no particular size, and just sticking it all over the place. And then I'm going to make an actual bow with this tool. And I didn't mention either, when I do put those little pieces of tool all in the raffia, I do just put just a little tiny like glob of glue, teeny weeny, just enough to hold it. And here you see I'm just grabbing some tool, scrunching it up in the center, and it kind of makes a little bow. I'm just going to take um, just a little bit of my jute and just tie it in the center. Then I'm going to cut the sides off. That way it'll flare out and it reminds me of like a firework, just like, pew, <laughs> here it is. And so I think that's cute. Anyways, I like doing that instead of adding a traditional bow because I just think it brings so much more to the table. And I'm just going to stick it right up in that very top area. And then I'm going to finish it off by taking one of those little bats from the Dollar Tree that you can clip on to stuff. And I'm just putting him up in the corner there. Then I just give it all one final fluff. Make sure everything's all foofy and cute and exactly how I want it. And I think these girls are gorgeous. I had so much fun doing DIY number two. And by the way, I've taken the microphone off. So if you think this sounds better, let me know. I've got one of these signs from Dollar Tree that says boo. And I'm going to paint it with my DIY paint in the color beadboard. It's an off-white color. And I'm not trying to get like a perfect coat here. I'm just kind of really sloppily painting it. You know, I wish I was one of those DIYers that could set everything out before I begin and say, we're going to use this and this and this in this DIY, but I am so not that person. Like, I just grab something like this sign and I start going. I never know where it's going to end up or what I'm going to do, but I had so much fun tinkering around with this DIY. I got the idea to take just a little bit of Mod Podge. I'm going to put it all over the sign, and I'm going to try to get this tool to stick to it. At first, I thought that the glue stick might be able to hold down the tool, but that was a huge fail. It does not hold this tool down. I don't know what I was thinking, but hey, the glue stick holds everything else down, so I thought, why not try it? But anyways, I just coated it with the Mod Podge and I laid two layers of that orange tool down and I like the way that it looks. It just gives it a little bit of glitter and pizzazz here and there. Now here's what it looks like after I got my two layers of tool on there. And you know, I have hit the tool with the heat gun before and noticed that it shrunk. And in my mind, I was thinking about, you know, how you do the napkins and you can burn that napkin to get the inner pieces out of there. I thought, I bet I could do that with some heat on this tool. So that's what I did was I held up my heat gun all around that word boo and it just kind of melted onto it. Now, just FYI, the heat gun was on low because I didn't want to totally just mess this up. I was trying to be careful, but I would hold it close, like inside right there, the O and the B's, you know, the holes there, and it just kind of melted it around exactly where I wanted it to. If there was too much overhang in some spots, all I did was just took my scissors and cut it off, and it actually came out really neat looking.
But like I said, I never know how it's going to end up. I can't tell you how I create things. I just do it. Now, I've got these two little skeletons, and I got these at the Dollar General. They came in a pack of five, and they're actually a little garland. You see, they've got the little hangers on their heads. And I wanted to take these two and turn them into a debonair gentleman and a gorgeous lady with much finesse. So the first thing that I did was just cut their little hangers off the top of their head because we're not going to need those. And now it's time for the fun part. And guys, I spent way too much time dressing these guys up, but like I said, I had fun. I got these little cupcake liners off of Amazon the other day. There was 600 in the pack, and I don't know what I'm going to do with 600, but I'll figure something out. I just cut a little diamond shape in the middle because I thought that I could slide it over her body and get it over those hips. You know, us ladies have those thick hips for birthing. So I had to make sure that it would go around her properly and just make the cutest little skirt. And it just looks like it flares out, just like a little 50s dress, like it's got a crinoline under it, and she's so cute. So I did put a couple of little dabs of glue here and there, just where I thought that it needed it to hold her dress in place. See, she's got her little legs crossed because she's a proper Southern lady. It's probably no surprise to you that I love my Southern ladies. I think Scarlett O'Hara is the prettiest thing I've ever laid my eyes on, and Gone with the Wind is my favorite movie. I used to love to dress up like her at Halloween, and boy, I thought I was something back in the day. Now here I'm just making a little halter top for our proper lady because she has to be covered. She doesn't show anything because, I mean, that's what a proper lady does. They're very modest. They know that you don't have to show skin. It's what's inside that matters, and it's your personality that makes you gorgeous. Even though she has no skin, she's only bones, she's going to be just this beautiful little lady. You'll see. So all I did was put a little bit of glue on the rib cage, and that was enough to hold her little halter top on. And I'm just putting glue where I need, and I had to stop and put my uh, finger protectors on because I was burning the far out of my fingers, and I don't want to do that. And our little lady wouldn't want me to do that either. So I'm just uh, adding the glue, like I said, where I need to. Then I'm going to take just a small piece of this cupcake liner, I mean the tiniest little cut, and I'm just kind of rolled it up. And you know, these cupcake liners can be kind of stiff when you roll them up like that. And that's what I wanted because I'm creating kind of like a little collar to go around her halter top. That way her gorgeous bone structure can be seen. I'm just sticking glue there on the sides of her little, um, like, shoulder bones to hold this on. Now, I know I'm not the only one that has a thing for, like, Scarlett O'Hara, so you guys let me know what's your favorite movie. I mean, it can be Halloween, if that's, because that's what we're doing anyways, but, I mean, just like your favorite movie. It doesn't matter what it is. Give me some good suggestions. It's been forever since I've actually sat down and watched a movie. I'm just that kind of person that I have to be doing something. As you know, it's usually crafts or something like that just to keep myself busy. I was going to put a hat on her, but I thought, come on, this is a Crafty Kathy video. She's going to have a Crafty Kathy hairband. Like, I mean, are you serious? I don't know what I was thinking. Of course, these are my favorite things in the world to wear because not only do I love my Southern ladies, but I'm way into like vintage, you know, dress. And I, that's why I wear the headbands because they take me back to like the 50s and 60s. I love the crinoline under the dresses. I love all of that. And that's the reason why I wear the hairbands like I just started wearing them one day, and now I have every color, every pattern that you can imagine. So that's all I'm doing for her is I put like a little band around, and then I made like a little 
bow, I guess you could say, and flipped it up so it would look right. I mean, you gotta admit, this little headband is just the cutest thing I have ever seen. And I love that her whole outfit was matching. At first, I was gonna do different cupcake liners, but I thought, no, no, no. This lady has got to be matching and from head to toe, and she is just so cute. And I'm so sorry that you can hear Roxy barking in the background, but my husband is outside the door and he's singing, and it's driving her crazy, and she's definitely a daddy's girl, and she does this special bark, and it's her come get me bark, so that he's supposed to know to open the door and bring her outside. She's just going nuts. Now, anyways, let's get started on our little man, and he's really quick and easy. All I did with him was use that same print so that they would be matching that same cupcake liner, and I just kind of like twisted it in the middle to make a little bow tie. So I'm going to stick his bow tie right in the front. And then he just gets a simple little hat. And for the hat, you see, I literally just took a small piece and kind of rolled it around itself and glued it. So it would make almost like a little circle. And then I'm going to take the middle part of the cupcake liner, which is circular, I'm going to cut that out, and that's going to be like the brim of his hat. I'm sorry that I'm kind of in and out of frame right here. I thought I was totally in frame, but apparently I wasn't. So all I did was just glue that little top part of the hat down to the bottom part, and then this is just going to go on his little head. Like I said, I just wanted to keep him simple because she's the star of the show. Then the way that I got these guys to sit down in here was their little um, legs, like at the joints, you literally have to kind of like break them so that they will move the right way. But what I did was I set him in that first O. I just put down a lot of glue in it and put like his pelvic area right there so it would stick. And he's just kind of waving. And then our little girl, I'm gonna sit her down in that bottom O and like I said before, she's a proper lady, so she's going to have her little legs crossed, and she's just so cute. And her little arms are going to be folded in her lap. So basically, the way that I got them to sit down was to glue their bottoms uh, inside that O. And then, like at their back area, I just put a little bit of glue there and that way, their upper torso could be glued to the other part, and they're not going anywhere. Now, I'm making this little sign for my grandson. He is absolutely going to love this. It's kind of cartoonish. It's not really what you would call, like, high-end decor or anything like that, but it sure is fun to make stuff like this from time to time. It's just whimsical and fun and cute. And I don't know about you, but I think her headband is to die for. That is the cutest little thing. I think she's so sweet. So now it's time to finish this piece up. I grabbed some of these little bat rings from the Dollar Tree, and I just clipped the little part off the back of them because I love the size of the bat. It's really easy to pop on stuff and make it cute. And then I just put, popped a couple little bats here and there. And I couldn't help but feel like there's something missing, like it just wasn't totally ready. So I pulled out one of my little string lights. Now I get these off of Amazon. They're in my Amazon store if you want some. I think you get like 15 in a pack for like $12 or something. Or they, they equal out to be only like a dollar per light. And I absolutely love them because they have, I don't know how many lights on there. There's at least 20. And the wire makes it very easy to like get around stuff. Like here you see I'm maneuvering this wire. I'm just putting a little bit of glue. And that glue doesn't burn the wire or anything. It holds it in place exactly where I need it. And I just kind of wrapped it around this sign a few times because I thought that my grandson would love this and love to be able to turn it on at nighttime on his front door. 
And the little battery pack is so small on these, it's very easy to hide it on the back of your DIY. And you always place it where you can change those batteries if you need to. I love these guys so much, I'm gonna play that sweet little love song that y'all like so much. She thinks I'm a little lazy, I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring, watching wrestling and rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind, tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hot as kerosene, baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall, and that don't bother us at all. I run naked through the yard, she flash every police scar. Drinking wine and getting tired, and shooting out the damn street lights. How does she put up with me? I thought you guys might get a kick out of that, and so many of y'all just absolutely love that song. It is quite funny. So on the last one, I'm going to use some of these little Etsy pictures again, and they're just really easy and quick. You know, you just pay a couple of dollars to the lady, and you print them off at your own home and print them on whatever you want. I wish I would have printed them on rice paper, but I didn't. Now, what I'm going to do is just pick this little witch here, the one that's got the pumpkin in front of her. I'm going to put her on this small little plaque that I got from the Dollar General yesterday. I only paid $2 for it. And the picture that's on it originally is perfectly fine. So I figured what we would do is just kind of make this, you know, double-sided. So whichever side you want to set out, you can. I'm just taking the sticker off. And I do want this little witch at the bottom that's got the pumpkin and the cat. So I pulled the plaque off of the bottom piece so I could trace and get the exact pattern. And I do not know why, but I decided to use my pinking shears to go around her because I thought that I was going to use that as some kind of flare. That's like I said, I never know what I'm going to do until I get there. So anyways, I cut it out in the shape that it goes on. Then I grabbed the liquid patina in the color dark and decrepit, which is kind of like a really dark brown color. I don't really want uh, a lot of color on this because you're not really going to see it. I just want to make sure that the edges don't show. And so I went over it real quick with the liquid patina with the dark and decrepit. I let it dry, and I'm just going to use double-sided tape. Now, I use this double-sided tape a lot, especially if there's something that I don't want to be permanent. Like, if I want to, I can take this picture off and, you know, no harm, no foul. So, all I'm doing is just putting my sticky tape on there, and I'm going to place it on my sign. I had just a little bit of overhang in a couple of spots, so I grabbed my finger sander to straighten that out. And then for my favorite part, I decided I wanted to glitter her up. Like I said, at Halloween and Christmas, I love to use glitter, but the rest of the year, it's just not for me. But I just like the pizzazz and the whimsy that it adds to all this cute little decor, especially the vintage decor. So I just went around with my Mod Podge and just kind of framed it out. And I used my Dollar Tree glitter to cover it. And I love this Dollar Tree glitter. It's the perfect size and the color is just gorgeous. Then I just popped a little bit of hot glue down in that hole that I pulled it out of and I pushed it back in there. And as I did that, I messed up a little bit of the glitter at the top, but that's okay because we can fix it. I just added a little bit more Mod Podge and a little bit more glitter. Then I pulled out my clickable stamps. I got these at Michael's. That's the only place I've been able to find them. And I love these clickable stamps. They're small, and they actually click together. That way, you don't have to worry about your word being uneven or looking all kebobbled or anything. It's always perfect. 
And since it was such a small area, all I could do was the word Halloween. And I put it on one of those tiny little pieces of the cotton muslin that I was showing you earlier. I love that muslin because I like the raggedy look of it. And it's just so quick and easy to pop on your projects. And then I just glued the word Halloween across the bottom. Then I took one of these little foam pieces that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got like, um, you know, the orange glittery ornaments on it. And then some with some other type of like glitter. And I just put an orange one on there and a black one. And I stuck one of those little bats on the front of the orange one. Then to finish it up and add a little pizzazz, I literally just tied a knot in the middle of some tool and I glued that tool down on the very back and then I just used just a couple of little drops of glue up the back of this sign. That way the tool would kind of be flaring out and just give it a little something extra. I took my scissors and kind of cut it so it would kind of be whimsical and kind of flying everywhere. I hope you like her. And if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much. And I am so glad that you came over to spend a little time with me today and just craft and hang out and have a good time. I hope you like my designs. I had so much fun making these, especially the little cupcake guys, because I don't normally do stuff like that, and it was just fun to kind of change things up a little bit. I absolutely love the vintage look of these girls. I think that they are adorable, and it's so easy to just print it off of your printer and use it any way that you want to. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love for you to do so and become a part of our family. We always have room for more, and we would love to have you. I hate to go, but I'll see you in the next one. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Hey there, everybody. It's me. It's Cousin Bobby Joe. Kathy's gorgeous, adorable, sweetheart, singing, stars in my eyes, cousin. All the way from the back hills of Tennessee, baby. Yeah, you know it. All the way from the land where Miss Dolly Pardon reigns. And you know it. Shout out, Dolly. You know I love you, girl. And I'll be seeing you real soon on the big screen. Because you know why? Guess what? Spam called me back and they want me to do another commercial. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be the new Spam and buying a weenie girl. What you think about that? <laughs> now, they did tell me that it is not a paid position. However, they're going to put me on a big old airplane and send me all the way to California. And you know that's my dream. I've always wanted to hit the big screen and get out of these hills of Tennessee. I was never meant to stay here. You know, I've always had the face for Hollywood, so I figure Hollywood needs to find me out, don't you think so? Anyways, I just stopped in at Cousin Kathy's because she's been having trouble with some big old hawks chasing her chickens around. You know, them hawks can pick two chickens up, one in each hand, and take it right up into the sky like a big old airplane just flying away. And you can't do nothing about it. So I come down here to provide Cousin Kathy with a little bit of protection for her chickens. Oh yeah, I am a certified chicken breeder. I started out when I was in elementary and I used to do that 4-H club, they call it. I had hogs, chickens, and goats, and I would go show them off at the county fair. That's kind of how I started off wanting to be a star, because I got a lot of attention, and people realized that there was something about old Bobby Joe Womble. I'm something different than the next one, you know? See, anyway, 
I'm gonna go and see what Kathy's chickens are doing. They love to talk to me. Them guys are squawkers. But anyways, I'll see y'all real soon. Be looking for me on the big screen. Spam and Baina Weenies. Now, them are the ones that's in the can, okay? So don't get it confused with anything else. But I love y'all, and I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye! Thank you so much for watching my video. And if you did like this video, I have one right here that's very similar in content. All you have to do is click on that actual video and it'll take you there when this one's finished. I love you guys and I'll see you real soon. God bless you and your families.